four years. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen in Washington. Maya Angelou says a person will tell you who they are. And that man, the 45th president, has told me, at least, who he is. I am real clear on what we have to do. We have to mobilize, energize. We have to educate. We have to vote. And we have to be like pit bulls. We have to fight for our rights. I'm telling you now, they're about to try to take it from us. But trust me on this. With the team here and with you here, it's not going to happen. I am real clear that the laborers come out of here. We are children of kings and queens. We are children of presidents. We are children of lawyers, doctors. And we are children of factory workers. And I'm sure, I'm sure we're not going to allow them to take back what we have worked so very hard. We had a president, President Barack Obama, by the way. Who also left it on the field. If we were talking about a football team, not the Lions today. <laughs> But if we were talking about those who are going to the Super Bowl, I am telling you now, that was a Super Bowl from 2008 to 2016. And I want to say thank you so very much. We cannot let them down and we cannot let those children down who are with us today. We're here representing children from eight to 108. My dad is 93 years old, and he said if he could have made it here, he would have rolled up here in his wheelchair, and he would have said, you got to continue the fight. You must continue the fight. I am real clear on what we have to do. The pain that I felt on November the 9th, I had never felt that before. And I have done campaigns almost every other year. But it was nothing like that. It literally, I'm telling you an inside story. The campaign called us out of Brooklyn, out of New York at the headquarters and said, if you need some psychological assistance or help, just call on us. We were devastated. The country was devastated. But I'm here to say we're standing tall today and standing proud today. And we're going to make a difference today. And I know ah! the sisters and brothers in Michigan are going to be like people. Thank you. 
And finally, I'd like to announce that we've just been notified that over 115 women from the National Council on Jewish Women is here on Shabbat because this is a dire emergency. in January of 1986 as the Lansing Women's Chorus, rooted in feminism and the belief in the power of women singing together as a tool for social justice. In 1989, it was renamed Sistrum Women's Chorus after the ancient Egyptian musical instrument, which is kept in constant motion and is a symbol of the sacred and ever-changing life force. Sistrum's mission is to provide a musical haven where women find and nurture their voices and enjoy camaraderie and community. They rejoice in raising their voices together as a diverse group of women, and they strive to entertain and also challenge their audiences and themselves, moving all to emotion, thought, and action. They seek to lend a spark to the worldwide struggle for peace and equality and for freedom of all people. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Sistrum Women's Chorus. <laughs>
you. We are Sistra, Lansing Women's Chorus. It's the goal of our community choir to create music that inspires, empowers, and entertains. As stated in our core values, we believe in the magic and joy of raising our voices together as diverse lesbian, bisexual, heterosexual, queer, and transgender women. by Patty Huntington to protest the Vietnam War. This was followed by an Ain't I Woman, based on the words and spirit of Sojourner Truth. Woo! We finished with a powerful piece by Bernice Johnson Reagan, as originally performed by Sweet Honey and the Rock. It is based on the words of organizer and civil rights activist Ella Baker. She says that we who believe in freedom cannot rest. We invite you to join us on this chorus and in this fight. Love. 